Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about drawing supply curves from supply equations. And actually this is the second video that I've done on this topic, so it's number two. In the last video, I drew the supply curve from this supply equations by finding the price axis intercept and the quantity axis intercept. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different, which is by finding the slope of the line and also the intercept from the supply equation itself. So let's just jump straight into an example and I can explain things as we go through. Say we had the supply curve P is equal to 5 plus 2Q over 3. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Definitely the first thing I'm going to do is draw the axes. So I have the horizontal axis which is Q and the vertical axis which is P. The idea behind the slope intercept method is that if our supply equation is expressed in a particular way, then we can identify different parts of that equation with different parts of the curve. In high school, you probably learnt something like the following. If you had two axes, a vertical and a horizontal, where the horizontal is x and the vertical is y, if we had any straight line function, here I've just drawn it upward sloping, but it doesn't need to be. If you had a straight line function, we can express it in a general form, which is y is equal to mx plus c. And if we express it in that general form, then c here, that's the number that's not attached to x, the number at the end, that constant we could identify with the y-intercept. Now, it's easy to see why we can do this. The y-intercept, of course, is just going to be that point at which the curve hits the y-axis. But where the curve hits the y-axis, our corresponding x value is 0. If we substitute x is equal to 0 into this general form of the equation y is equal to mx plus c, then we get y is equal to m times 0 plus c. Since any number times 0 is just equal to 0, we're left with C. The second important part of the equation is M, which I'm going to call our slope coefficient. The slope coefficient describes how steep the line is and also in what direction it goes, either upwards or downwards sloping. So we can think of our slope coefficient as rise over run or the vertical movement over the horizontal movement as we move from one point on the curve to another. It's very easy to draw curves from equations which have this general y is equal to mx plus c shape because it's very easy to find two points along the line. So that's how we're going to approach drawing the supply curve. We need to isolate from its form the price axis intercept instead of the y axis intercept and also the slope coefficient. Well, in our general equation, y is equal to mx plus c, c, which was the y-axis intercept, was this constant term. It wasn't attached to the x variable. We don't have x or y, we have p or q, but you can see in the equation, p is equal to 5 plus 2q over 3, 5 plays this role of this constant. It's not attached to q. So this is going to be our p-intercept. The second thing we need to find is our slope coefficient. In our general form, y is equal to mx plus c, m was the slope coefficient, and that was the number that multiplied x. Now, we don't have x anymore. We have q, and the number that multiplies q is 2 over 3. So that's going to be our slope coefficient. And we can interpret that as rise over run. Great, so let's just go ahead and put in the p-intercept 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's one point. And the way we're going to use the slope coefficient to find another point along the curve is just by using our understanding of rise over run. We're going from a p-axis intercept of 5, where q is equal to 0, and our run value is 3. So we have to go across 3. So we're starting from q is equal to 0, so q is 1, 2, 3. Okay? 
And then we have to rise to, so we're starting at five and we have to rise to one, two, seven. Great, so we know that our second point is actually this point that falls through the point three, seven. So now we have two points along the line and I can just line them up together. I can just join them up together perfectly. Great, good work. Okay, good, so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit by labeling the second point properly, three, seven. And that's it, that looks like a good supply curve to me. Great, so I'm just going to do one more example. And this time Q is on the left hand side. So we have a supply curve Q is equal to P on five minus one. And what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, as always, we're going to draw the axes P and Q, Q on the horizontal, P on the vertical. And what students often do when they see Q on the left hand side is that they get the coefficient on P, which is in this case one over five, and they take that as the slope coefficient. And then they get the constant, which is negative one, and they take that as the price axis intercept. But we haven't got the equation in the right form, which is why we need to put P on the left hand side. As you can see, I'll just do really quickly, Y is equal to MX plus C. Y was isolated on the left hand side and Y is your vertical axis. Here, in the case of the supply curve, P is our vertical axis, but we have Q on the left hand side. So we have to put P on the left hand side. To do this, I'm going to do some algebra. I'm going to move everything over and just leave P. So the first thing I can work with is this constant, 1. So I'm going to just move 1 over to the left-hand side. So I can do that by plusing 1 to both sides. So I get Q plus 1 is equal to P on 5 minus 1 plus 1. The minus 1 and plus 1 cancel out. That's great. So we're left with Q plus 1 is equal to P on 5. So I'm going to have to multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of that division. So I get 5 open brackets, 6 plus 1 is equal to P on 5 multiplied by 5. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So we've got P times 1, which is just P. We can now put that on the left hand side. Uh, we're just swapping the sides. It is equal to 5Q plus 5. I've opened up those brackets. So 5Q and 5. Great, so that's good. So now we have P on the left hand side. And that means that we can look at our constant and our coefficient on our Q and find our price axis intercept and, and our slope coefficient. So here we've got 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's our price axis intercept. That's our constant. And for our slope, well, our slope is our coefficient on Q and that's 5 as well. So our slope is equal to rise over run is equal to 5. Now, to really understand this, we need to put 5 into its rational terms. We need to express it as a fraction to see what our rise value and run value is. Now, 5 can be expressed as a fraction just as 5 divided by 1 is just equal to 5, right? So now we have our run value of 1 and our rise value of 5. So that's good. So let's run first. So we go, we're at the intercept there where Q is zero, but we can go over one, and we go up five, and so five plus five is 10. So the second point on our line is one, 10. So let's join those two points up together. We'll label our S, and we'll label that point, that important second point. Good, so the important thing for this example was that we, we couldn't use the slope intercept method when Q was isolated on the left-hand side. That's a very sad mistake to make. Great, let me know if you like the videos. Please subscribe and like if they helped you. Let me know if you would like me to look at anything in particular. I can, I can do that, no worries. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.